In this video, we're going to discuss the solution for question 10 on the practice final exam for math 1220, in which case we're asked to find the interval of convergence for the power series, where we take the sum where n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n over n times 2 to the n, as you can see on the screen right here. So when it comes to finding the interval of convergence, the first thing we want to find out is the radius of convergence. So for what radius does this thing converge across? In which case, I would recommend using the ratio test, unless, unless there's a good reason to use a different integral test, a uh, different convergence test, maybe like the root test. Uh, the root test would work okay right here. I'll, I do think the ratio test will be a little bit of cleaner of a calculation. So remember with the ratio test, you have to look at the sequence of ratios, hence the name, of a n plus 1 over a n, where we're looking at the sequence which we're adding together, and that includes the power of x right there. And so if you look at a n plus 1, this will become x to the n plus 1. We replace each of the n's with the n plus 1. And then at the denominator, you get n plus 1. That n became an n plus 1. And then the power of 2 becomes a, a 2n plus 1. Uh, this right here is our, just, just to label it here, this is our a n plus 1 term. The next thing we want to label is the 1 over a n term, uh, which would look like, just it'll just look like the original sequence, the terms and the sum, uh, just written upside down, taking its reciprocal. So we get n times 2 to the n over x to the n. And this is all inside the absolute value. Uh, my re recommendation next when trying to work out this limit associated to the ratio test is put together similar type things like exponentials, the x's, the n's, put these things together. And so, for example, there's this rational expression n over n plus 1. Those are good friends. Um, there's going to be this exponential with regard to 2, so 2 to the n over 2 to the n plus 1. And then finally, uh, there's going to be this x to the n plus 1 sitting above x to the n. And you'll notice I dropped the absolute values with the exception of x right here, because as n goes from 1 to infinity, uh, the n is always going to be positive. So n over n plus 1 is a positive quantity, and exponentials are always positive, 2 to the n right here. Uh, and so taking the absolute value of positive terms that are known to be positive is just redundant. But as x could be a negative value, the absolute value is still necessary there. So let's do a little bit of simplification here. Uh, when you take something like 2 to the n plus 1, this does factor as 2 to the n times 2 to the first, just by exponent rules. The 2 to the n's would cancel, leaving you just a 2 in the denominator. Uh, the same thing's going to happen with x to the n. Uh, you'll be left with just an x to the first. And so this thing would simplify as we get the absolute value of x over 2, and then we're going to times that by n over n plus 1. And so that's the amount of algebraic simplification we can do. Now, as we take the limit as n goes to infinity, in that situation, the n over n plus 1, as this is just a balanced rational function, this will just approach 1. So we get the absolute value of x over 2 times 1. That is the absolute value of x over 2. Now, to be convergent, the ratio test expects that this thing to be, is supposed to be less than 1. And so if you have the absolute value of x over 2 is less than 1, if you solve for the absolute value of x, you'll get the absolute value of x is less than 2. And this right here is our radius of convergence. Uh, so notice we now can answer our question. The radius of convergence is equal to 2 for this exercise. Now that's just the first part of this exercise. It's one of the most important things. We have to identify the radius of convergence. And so this tells us that we'll be convergent as long as x is less than 2 and greater than negative 2. But what happens at 2? What happens at negative 2? We actually have to plug those values in individually and see what happens. So if we take the first one, x equals 2, if you plug it into the series where n equals 1 to infinity, you're replacing x with 2, not n. Um, and so in the numerator, remember, our, our thing looks like 2 to the n. Sorry, it looks like x to the n over n 2 to the n. So you're, the, the denominator is left unchanged, n times 2 to the n. If we plug in 2 for x, we're going to get 2 to the n here. Notice that the 2 to the n's cancel out, and we're left with the sum of 1 over n, n equals 1 to infinity. This is the harmonic series, and therefore this is divergent uh, by the p-test or just the fact it's the harmonic series. We know it very well. So when n equals 2, we're going to get divergence. So do not include that in the interval of convergence. 
Um, but just because it didn't work for two doesn't mean it won't work for negative two. It also doesn't mean it will work for negative two. You gotta try it individually. So we get the sum of n equals one to infinity of, in this case, you're gonna get negative two to the n over n two to the n. And so in this situation, you'll notice that as you cancel out the two to the n's, the two to the n cancels out, but you're left with a negative one to the n in the numerator. So you're gonna get the sum as you get negative one to the n over n, n equals one to infinity right here. Now this one actually is convergent. Uh, this is the harmonic or the alternating harmonic series. And so this one's convergent by the alternating series test. And so negative two should be included in the interval. So as our final answer, our interval of convergence would be negative two to two, where negative two is included, uh, but positive two is not. And so this is our interval of convergence right here. Now for full credit on this question, we have to first identify the radius convergence. You're gonna get the most of the points there, but you have to also check individually the two endpoints. So I need to see a check for, for positive two and see a check for negative two. Um, if you're missing those endpoints, the checking of the endpoints, if, if you just say the, radi the radius of convergence is two and stop there, or you say some erroneous statement, two comma two, something like that, or even if you get the right statement, if there's no if I, there's no visual check that you, you actually see why two diverged and negative two converged, then of course that's gonna be a forfeiture of some points. Make sure you check the endpoints on this question number 10.